Hello boys and girls, it is time for Writer's Workshop. This is Miss Alpine here, and today we're going to be continuing to talk about fictional narrative writing, but we are going to focus on our very last paragraph of our essay, which is the conclusion paragraph. So we already know a narrative writing piece is really just writing a story. We have to have characters, setting, the problem and a solution and we of course have to have a very clear beginning middle and end to our story we are going to include transition words like first next then and finally to help us move our story along from event to event during our writing of course we have to go through our writing process and we've already done a lot with our pre-writing where we organized um, actually thought of some ideas and then took those ideas and we organized them into a graphic organizer and then we also already have done some drafting where we put all those ideas into complete sentences. And we've already put our introduction into some sentences and we did our body, uh, body paragraph as well. So today we're gonna be focusing on drafting that conclusion paragraph in complete sentences. So when we look back at our graphic organizer, what's included in our narrative essay, we have our three paragraphs, introduction, body, and then conclusion. Now we're going to be focusing just on this conclusion paragraph and in your conclusion paragraph we want to make sure that we do three things so when i look at the puzzle pieces over here i like to use puzzle pieces because they kind of fit together but these puzzle pieces kind of fit together anyway and just like they would kind of go in any order um, these three things that we have to include in your narrative conclusion can go in any order as well but here are the three things that we need we need to have a look back. So remember, we've already talked about introduce our character setting plot. We've talked about the beginning, middle, end, including our mix up and our fix up. So we already know the basic story, but the conclusion is really just wrapping it all up for us. And when we look back, basically what's happening is the character is reflecting back on the experience. And so they're saying like, wow, I can't believe that happened or something like that. Then we're going to do the wrap up. And the wrap up describes what happens after the main problem was happened and it was solved. So this could be something that happened maybe later that day or maybe even a week or a month later in the story. But it kind of ties back to that experience. It just reminds us of what happens after all of this occurred. And then finally, the lookup. We've already talked about this, but the lookup is basically the lesson that the character or characters learn from this experience. So these are the three things we want to do in that very last paragraph of our essay, our narrative essay. We want to look back where we reflect on the experience, wrap it up and tell us what happened after it was solved, and then look up where we talk about what we learned or the, what the characters learned from the experience. So here is just um, a video that kind of will help sum that up for us as well. Now this, um, in this video, she refers to it as the closing, but remember, we are going to call it our conclusion paragraph. Let's take a look. Realistic fiction writing for kids. Episode 5, writing a closing. I'm writing a realistic fiction story. It's about a girl named Mary who takes her dog Sam on a walk in the snow. She slips on ice, drops his leash, and he runs away. I've already written an introduction to my story, the events leading up to the problem, and a detailed description of the problem. Now I'm ready to write about the solution or how the problem gets solved. But this part is really important too. I can't just tell the solution in one sentence. I need to give details about what happened. Suddenly, Mary saw her friend Carlos walk around the corner. He was walking home from the grocery store. Carlos, can you help me? Sam is loose. Carlos had a great idea. He pulled out a donut from his grocery bag. Come here, Sam. Sam sniffed the air and ran right to him. Thank you so much, Carlos. Whew, aren't you glad that problem got solved? Well, I can't just end the story here. I should add a final closing to my story. We can do this by telling a lesson the character learned, leaving the reader with a little laugh, or showing the feelings of the character. I'll use two of these strategies for my closing. 
Mary was so relieved. Next time, we need to be way more careful in the snow, Sam. I used a feeling and a lesson learned. I'm so proud of my story, but I bet I can make it even better. Check out episode six to see how I revise my writing. Okay. So I like that she talked about using not only about a lesson, but like talking about your feeling. And um, when we look back and reflect back on the experience, that's usually when you will express some kind of feelings or emotion about that, ex that experience. So I wanted to take a look here. Um, this is the example, um, a mentor text that we've used a few times, and it has our three paragraphs, um, introduction, body, and then our conclusion. And this is called the Dino Scare Exhibit. So I'm not going to read the whole thing again because we've already read it a few times. But just to remind you, this is a story about a narrative about this family and the main character is, um, I, I believe it's um, the son, our daughter. I don't know. We don't know. Um, let's say it's the son. And they're going to the museum and they kind of talk about what happened in the body, the beginning, middle, end, where they go to different exhibits, but then they go into the dinosaur room. And remember the dinosaur, the fake one, roars and the main character gets really scared and, and he screams and jumps and everyone stares at him. But then the family, so that's the main problem, right? But the solution was the family all just kind of laughs about it. And even their museum tour guide kind of laughs and says, hey, it's not the first time it happened, no worries. So that's the solution. But let's take a look at this very last paragraph here because he could have just said, hey, no, no big deal, this happens all the time. And then that's the end of the story. Uh, but it kind of leaves the reader hanging a little bit. So in this very last short conclusion paragraph, and you guys, conclusion paragraphs don't have to be long. Usually they're only about two to three sentences. Um, but let's see how the author actually does the look back, the wrap up, and the look up. It says, we ended up seeing many other amazingly cool things that day at the museum. Even though I had an embarrassing moment, I would definitely go back to visit the museum and the Dinoscare exhibit again. Okay, so remember, you could do these in any order, and it looks like the author here starts with the wrap-up. So it explains what happened after that main problem was solved. And it says they ended up seeing a lot of other cool things in the museum that day. Then the look back is where we reflect back on the experience and maybe even show a little bit of emotion. So it says, even though I had an embarrassing moment. So kind of like looking back at that. But then they talk about the look up. What did they learn or how did they feel? What was that lesson? Even though there, it was embarrassing, it says, I would still go back and visit that place again. Obviously, because they had such a good experience outside of that embar embarrassing moment. So even though this paragraph is only a couple sentences long, it does hit everything we want to include in the conclusion paragraph. The look back, the wrap up and the look up. So I remember I gave this assignment to my students before where I had them look at this image and they had to write um, a narrative essay about what happened in this story based off of this picture. Now, I had a friend who created this draft and this one was called The Biggest Snowball Fight. And um, my friend who wrote this, she, had a really good, remember she already revised her introduction and then also had a decent paragraph, uh, body paragraph. And she even had one sentence for her conclusion paragraph. And um, let's take a look at what she wrote because I wanna tell you what we said and how she made it better. In our introduction, it says, it was a snowy winter morning when Alex and his brother Sam decided to build a snowman in the front yard. They were having such a good time, but then some neighborhood boys came and ruined all their fun. The neighborhood kids ambushed the two brothers with snowball after snowball, but the brothers fought back. The neighborhood kids ran away in defeat. Okay, so originally this was her conclusion paragraph. The brothers realized that when they worked as a team, they can defeat any challenge. And I told the author, I said, you know what, this is pretty good, but let's go back and look at all the pieces that we can include into your conclusion paragraph. And so we went back and we talked about maybe how she can add more about the look back where she can reflect back on the experience and maybe how did the brothers feel after they defeated the, the neighborhood kids? And then could she also maybe give more description about what happened maybe after those kids ran away? 
And then she already had this part, the look up, the reflection. Um, so really all she had to do was include these two parts, the look back and the wrap up. So she went back and she did a little bit of revising. And then when we met again, I took a look at what she wrote. And now let's take a look at just her conclusion paragraph. So nothing changed in the intro of the body, but look at this, how much better this conclusion paragraph is now. It says, Alex and Sam couldn't believe they defeated the neighborhood bullies. They shook their glove fists and shouted with joy as they celebrated their victory. Alex and Sam realized that when they worked together, they could conquer the world. Oh man, isn't this so much better? Rather than just that one sentence, now we have three complete sentences that give us more detail. And it, they, it shows that the characters looked back and talked about how they felt like they couldn't believe they did that. Then it wrapped it up and told us what did they do after the kids ran away? Well, the boys celebrated by shaking their fists in the air and shouting, woohoo! And then finally, we get back to that look up where they realize they can do anything when they work together. This to me was such a better concluding paragraph because now as a reader, I can visualize so much more. So here's your assignment for today. You are gonna be looking at another student's writing. And this is actually really good. We see they have, um, this is our narrative essay, and it's based off of this picture right here of this kid who you can see is, is kind of, uh, I guess, they're catching a ball in a glove, but obviously he doesn't look very confident, right? Well, we're gonna read this introduction and then the body paragraph. And then what you're gonna do is after you read this, you are actually gonna click in here into this text box and you are going to type the, the conclusion paragraph. So maybe two to three sentences that will look back, wrap up, and look up the last part of this essay for the narrative, or for, for the writer here, okay? So we're gonna be helping this person out. Let's take a look at what the story says. It was a perfect spring day. My classmates and I were waiting outside on the blacktop when our PE teacher announced that we were going to play softball. As we made our way out to the field, my stomach slowly turned into a giant knot of fear. Softball's just not my game. I have a knack for always getting the hit in the head by the ball. It doesn't matter where I'm standing, the ball just seems to find me. My, teammate, my teammates gave me a glove and put me way out in the left field. I didn't complain. I just wanted to make sure I knew when PE ended so I wouldn't be left behind. Nothing happened for the first three innings. Well, things happened, but not in my little part of the softball field. I started daydreaming. The next thing I knew, I heard the sound of a ball whizzing through the air. I put my glove, I put put up my glove to protect my head, and an amazing thing happened. I caught the ball in my glove. Okay, well, technically, I mean, we have we know what the main plot is, right? The ball's coming right at him. But it's solved because the boy here, right? If it's the main character, he caught it. Yay! But let's think about how we can make a conclusion paragraph for this essay. So let's wrap it up. Maybe look back. How do you think the main character feels as he looks back at this experience? And then the wrap up. What do you think the main character did after he caught the ball? And then finally, the look up. What do you think the main character learned from this experience? So you're going to do these three, include these three things as you type out at least two to three paragraphs explaining the look up, the wrap up, excuse me, the look back, the wrap up, and the look up for this narrative essay. All right, the instructions again are right over here in this blue. Let's go be writers.